Wow. I was about ready to cry on both of those songs. And I'm usually not an emotional guy. <laughs> holy, holy, holy. First of all, before I get carried away a little bit, uh, what an honor, preacher. It really is. I, I, I'm getting ready to turn 83, and uh, I went to 35-plus pastor school, Brother Mickey. <laughs> and this is the closest I've ever seen. In fact, in some ways, it was equally as good except you didn't have the teaching going on between classes. But this thing with the preaching we've heard this week, I am telling you, I mean, it's a blessing on blessing on blessing. And then I'm a southern boy. I'm from West Virginia. <laughs> the food has been very, very good because I had that southern twang in there, you know, you know what I mean? I ate three bowls of soup last night. It reminded me going to my Aunt Ada's, and she said, say, John, eat the, 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 some sp soup on the stove. You just go get whatever you want. You know, that's what it was. We know, but, you know, it was just go eat. And, and, and the ladies that cook that, there got to be a few Southern ladies mixed in with that because I got a couple of bowls there, brother. I'm telling you, that was right out of West Virginia. I want to tell you that right now. And my soul, with all the help, kindnesses, it just, it's kindness. So we say uh, truly a heartfelt uh, appreciation to this. I love, I love Brother Angel. We support his boy, Ben, over in Madagascar. And, and uh, uh, he, he's got a pastor's heart. You know, you don't have to be around Ben Angel to figure that out very long. I mean, he just... Terry Angel right here, this guy, he's looking, what can I do for you? What can I do for you? What can I do for you? And I appreciate it. And Brother Coyle, he comes and blesses us every year. We have him every year. And we have a time. We do. We do. I took him out calling one time. We got, remember going in that Muslim house? <laughs> I thought we were going to be martyrs for the faith. <laughs> And I told him, I left him in. I left. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, where I was going, I went out and called our Muslim missionary. And I said, hey, uh, can you help me? He said, sure, what's up? He said, we're in this Muslim house, <laughs> Brother Denny Carl and I. And they were mad as a hornet. <laughs> and he asked me what kind of you know, breed of Muslims they were. And I told him, he says, get out of that house. <laughs> So I come back in, and Coral was trying to talk to him. I said, Brother Danny, we got to go. There's something important come up. <laughs> and the important thing was getting him out of the house. I tell you, he comes and always a blessing. So good to see my family back there, some of my family. Our youngest daughter, Deborah, she's a uh, church pianist up with Brother John Wilkerson uh, in Hammond, been up there 30 years playing the piano in her. Husband Wes, he hardest working man I know. I'll say that I'll say it in front of you, Wes. You're the hardest working man I know. He's found out he just got cancer. Pray for him. Pray that God would work a miracle in his uh, in his life. And of course, Travis, my grandson, there. I love to beat him in basketball. <laughs> when it's bad when an 83 year old man beats you in basketball. I'm saying. <laughs> I know what I'm going to get when I go up there. Uh, hey, Pastor, uh, Grandpa, Papa, let's go out and play some basketball. No, I quit doing that a long time ago. I'm going to talk to you about something that <laughs> I know the Lord wants me to preach it, <laughs> but it's 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 different, a little different. I, I, in fact, I I've been saved 70 years, and I've and I've never heard. I've read it in the Bible. But I've never heard much preaching on it, and, and I didn't have any messages on it. And, and here, here's what I got into that. I got into this thinking, you know, uh, holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. Man, that's something. And I got to thinking, have I been hurting God 
in any way. And uh, don't ask God that question <laughs> because he'll tell you the truth. He loves us so much. And I thought, have I been hurting God in any way? And, and I got, I'm going to do a study on, and then I thought, you don't find the term hurting God. You find the term grieving God. And there's just something about that that just convicted me. And I thought, wow, grieving God? I know a little bit about grief. My dear wife, finest Christian woman I've ever met in my life, uh, She's been going now 15 years, epitome. The, the doctors would say, uh, Ms. Paisley, she's uh, her oncologist who had a great big cancer center there in the Tri-Cities. Two weeks before she died, he came in and he says, he said to me, he's a Jew, and we talk Bible. <laughs> Always Old Testament, but we talk Bible. And he came in and he said, Pastor, I've never met anybody like your wife. And I said, thank you, Doc. He, he said, well, let me just say what I'm going to say. I've given her the hardest chemo that I can give a person. He was an oncologist. And he was about the same age I was. He's in his 70s. And he said, um, I've never seen a spirit like she had. And I I, you're going to think I'm exaggerating, and I'm even going to say God can strike me dead if I'm not telling you the truth. She did not complain about anything. Right, Deb? <laughs> I could not believe it. I mean, here we go, and, and, and we go to the first time we go find out we have cancer. She has cancer, and the doctor, the good doctor, and he said, Ms. Paisley, you got terminal cancer. You got a cancer that's incurable. I think we might have a little shot at it, but and uh, and all she just said to the doctor, well, doctor, I I didn't want to hear that. <laughs> that's all she said. She didn't get oh, I'm falling apart and everything. Listen, I watched her go through losing a hundred pounds, never complaining one time. She had such a sense of humor. That she, you know what chemo, you know that. <laughs> chemo will, will weaken your bones. Now she had the, and the doctor said, she had the most, she had the most highest chemo that I've ever given to anybody. And she fell. Now, now you would think she might get a little depressed. She wasn't a depressed person at all. <laughs> she fell. And broke both of her feet, Brother Terry. <laughs> so we carry her off to the hospital. And I knew the doctors because I've been around there so long. And one of the orthopedic surgeons, medicine in the emergency room, he said, Miss Paisley, you have boogered yourself up there. You got two broken feet. One of them, I can think I can get by with a walking boot, but the other one, we're going to have to do surgery. But we can't do surgery because your blood is so low from chemo, you won't heal. So we're going to have to give you transfusions. And I think they gave her six units of blood over a four-day period. Then they took her in, and they put 14 screws <laughs> and a plate in, in her foot, or her ankle. Actually, it was a high outside her ankle a little bit there. And uh, when they brought her back from surgery, the, uh, one of our uh, families from uh, the church came by to see her. They, they liked to badger with her, like uh, Brother Coral does. <laughs> and so they said, how are you doing? Now, get this, get this response, okay. Here she's, she's got terminal cancer. She just broke both of her feet. And she says, uh, she says to me, uh, says to him, the guy that asked her the question, she says, well, Brother Howard, let me tell you how I am. Okay. And I, I didn't know what was going to I, I never knew what she was going to say. She says, I'm two quarts low and all screwed up. 
and that's the way she was. That was her spirit. I'm too coarse low. And I, was, I asked her after they left, I said, where do you get it, come, to, come up with this stuff? <laughs> and she says, I don't know. It just comes to me. But, but, but that's the way she was. She, and, and, and then the doctor says, I want her to have a bone marrow uh, test. And uh, you could see the grace of God just working with her in the worst of cancers. And, and she, uh, he said, I want her to have it. He let me go. I even went in surgery with her. And they let me go because I didn't leave her side. And, and when I got, uh, she got the bone marrow and came back, the bone marrow test. Here's, here's the, uh, the great doctor we had, really, a good doctor. He's the one like this. And I'm sitting over there, and he's going. <laughs> and I said, Doc, that's three shaking of your head. I, I, what in the world is going on? He said, I can't believe this report. And he said, uh, she has perfect bone marrow. And I, then I saw an opportunity to get some Jewish pre preaching going, Brother Smith. <laughs> I said, well, let me quote you a verse out of the Old Testament, out of the book of Proverbs. It says, a merry heart doeth good like a medicine, but a broken spirit, what does it do? It dries the bone. And he, he had never seen that verse evidently. And he said, uh, he said, uh, that's in the old, I said, book of Proverbs, get your Bible out and read it. Yeah. And, and that's the way she was. And just always on top. She could have said after she found out she had 14 screws and a plate, <laughs> she could have been depressed. Oh, I don't know why God's doing this to me. Uh-uh. She didn't live like that. She didn't live like that. I mean, it was, she was on top side the whole time until she unconsciously went to, uh, un in unconscious and then went off to heaven. And we have a, another daughter, Liz, and her husband, Mark Rogers, he's an evangelist. And, and, and Wes, remember asking me that night, when do you think he shall die? And, I, and he knows I said this to him. I said this, Wes, she'll die when Mark gets here. Uh, she was family, all family. And, and sure enough, Mark came in, and, and she woke up to greet him. He'd been preaching somewhere. And, uh, and, uh, and I thought, now she'll go. And you know, it was less than four hours later, she went to heaven. Because her life was others, you know? So when I hear, uh, you know, how good God is, and I'm going to make a statement. This is something that was an eye opener to me. I never read this before. The statement was made by a man of knowledge. He said, talked about grieving. And he says, um, he says that the ones that love the most grieve the deepest. Let me say that one more time. I, I, you don't get anything else of what I'm saying other than Scripture. The one who loves the most grieves the deepest. Well, I got thinking about that. I thought, my soul. Who loves me the most? Lord, when you sing that song, the folks just sing that song. That's a love song, you know? It's the message of the cross. I used to work in a hospital when I was at, I went to, the first school I went to was BBC in Springfield and graduated there. My senior year, I worked in a big hospital. I loved it. I, it was like pre-ministerial training, brother. <laughs> and I worked in the emergency room. And I was memorizing a verse. You want to turn to it. We're talking about God's love for us right now. And it has to do with grieving. Let's look at Isaiah 52. 
Isaiah 52, and this verse here just amazes me. In Isaiah 52, it reads, and, it, and, and when God, and I tell people all the time, God doesn't, God doesn't exaggerate. I mean, if he says it's great, it's great. If he says it's sad, it's sad. I mean, he doesn't exaggerate. Doesn't exaggerate. Look at Psalm, Isaiah 52. This, this, this verse has been in my heart. And uh, Brother Coral, I think you put this in the, the uh, revival fires just a few weeks ago. Look at verse 14. This is a prophecy of the Savior. It says, and many were astonished at thee. That's astonishment. That's where your mouth is open and your eyes are big. You're saying, my soul, what's this? Look what it says. As many were astonished at thee, his vestige was so marred more than any man. Uh, folks, did you see what that just said? His visage was so marred more than any man. Remember, God does not exaggerate. And, uh, and from, uh, it formed more than the sons of men. So here I am. I'm, I'm working the emergency room. That's usually where I worked. I'm working the emergency room, and uh, I was uh, helping get people out of ambulances and helping doctors whatever they're doing to these patients that's come in. There's a head-on collision. They called in, and they said, uh, hey, we got a, I've got a bad one tonight. We had a head-on collision. We got one dead, got two almost dead, <laughs> and we're on our way. And he said, John, you meet us at the, at the where they take him into the emergency room. So I was out there waiting and started unloading these people. Took them in the emergency room. The guy was, uh, I have never seen so much blood in my life. I mean, I've seen a lot of things, but I ain't never seen anything like that. And you got to remember, I memorized Isaiah chapter 52. And I, I, and so I, I go in there, push the man in, help the doctor, and he's examining him, looking at him, and he says, dead, John, get him out of here. And I, he said, don't go, go to the morgue. Take him, put him behind the curtain, because I need you back here to help me with this other fellow. And, and like I say, it's a thousand bed hospital today. And I said, yes, sir, I'll be right back. And so I pushed him behind the curtain, but I had to pause and look. I had never seen anything like that in my life. And he, I prayed and asked the Lord a question. <laughs> Lord, you said his vestige was so marred more than any man. This guy here is part of the human race. And Jesus was so much more marred than this guy. And the Holy Spirit said, you got it. He was marred more. And, and I can't imagine what Jesus, with the cat of nine tails and all the stuff that went with that and the poundings and the beatings and the, uh, and Why? all about the cross. So God loves us more than anyone. I mean, there's nobody even holds a close second. My wife was the sweetest thing. I'm telling you, she was something else. But even my wife couldn't hold a candle to our Savior. Now, what did I just sit through saying? Here's what I said. Uh, this blew me off my chair almost. I was reading this in a wasn't a psychology book, it was some book I was studying, and and it says the one who loves the most grieves the deepest. But Smith, that, that changed that verse about grief. It says, Grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby we're sealed under the day of redemption. And Jesus, because it's of infinite love and holy love, he loves us more. And now here's the thing. 
He grieves us more. For instance, let me, let me show you what I'm talking about. You know this. You've heard an illustration like this. Uh, you got a, you got a raise in your work, your job, and you got an extra $300 you got in your wallet. And you come home, your wife greets you, and you got grown kids, but the, you put your wallet on the, the dresser and you go to sleep. You wake up in the morning and you find that somebody has gotten in to your wallet and stole all the money. <laughs> you know what your first thought is? Anger. I'd like to get a hold of that guy. <laughs> I'd like to, uh, you know, I don't know. I, I got him. I got it figured to an a angry uh, a man that I don't know. But then they do investigative work. The mama, in her insight, gives some things into it, and you find out your son has taken the money. You know what you do now? You grieve. You know why? Because you love him so much. I mean, and, and, and here we got this one that loves us so much. And, and we don't, uh, I thought to myself, uh, my soul, I hate to have to stand before God. And he asked me, did you ever... Do you ever know how much I grieved? And I say, no, Lord, I didn't have the foggiest idea. No. When you look at the scriptures, you see that God grieves. And I'll be honest with you. The last one I want to cause grief to is this wonderful one that's been sung about tonight. Gave his all on the cross, was beaten beyond recognition. Uh, and no greater love hath that. Do you think I want to hurt him? I don't. I. I, I but I was praying before this. Uh, and, and, and when you say, what's this do? If you get this view of this, it's helped me. And that, this was just something that didn't, I didn't hear a message on it or anything. He, this just came to me. Have I been hurting God? And then I got to study it. And I said, that's not the good word. The word is grieving God. Have I been grieving God? Well, let's look at Genesis chapter 6, okay? I'm just going to show you something. And by the way, this will help you in your soul winning. If you take this, let me tell you. you uh, well, let's look at this passage first. Go to, go to Genesis 6, 6, 6, 5 first, okay? And uh, this, is, this is what we see today. And, and, and I hate to say, even Christians are a part of it. And look what it says in chapter 6 and verse, let's get here, here, 4, 5, 6. Here we go. Chapter 5, chapter 6. Here we go. Look at verse 5. And God saw the wickedness of man was great on the earth. And here's what it says. And that every imagination of the heart was only evil continually. Let's pray. Father, help us to see what we are in your sight. Thank God for the wonderful blood of Christ. Thank you for the music we've heard. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. And Lord, help us to watch and be careful about grieving God. We don't want to grieve you. We don't want to make you sad. We don't want to make you feel down. Yeah, I know you don't, but you're an infinite God of all power. But we do grieve you it says right here and help us to see it and repent of it in jesus name amen it says it repented the lord verse six that he made man on the earth and here it is it grieved him at 
his heart. So here we see God the Father, the Creator, all that, and we realize the Trinity. I'm going to talk to you about the Trinity. But I'm not going to go into the theological stuff, just that I believe this God the Father looking after he made the earth, and it repented him that he'd made man, and it grieved his heart. Well, what was it? This is sad because <laughs> I'm going to quit preaching and go to metal. <laughs> The thoughts of his heart were evil. And not just evil, continually. You know, we, we got the most wicked, I, I don't know if ours might not be worse than back when <laughs> in the days of Noah was. And we just, we get so used to the wickedness of our own hearts. And, uh, a bad thought will come through. Well, you know, it's just, that's just the way we are. No, 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 no. I want you to know, and I'm preaching to myself, just must I preach to anybody else. That grieves Almighty God. And I think when we call it the way it's said in the scriptures, an evil thought, whether it be a lustful thought, an angry thought, I'm going to get that person back, whatever, you name it. You know what an evil thought is. And if I realize that the one who loved me the most felt so deeply grieved in his heart over my evil thought, you know what that does? That'll put your defense up on how you think. That'll put your defense up. Listen. I, 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 I was, came about this message just praying, Lord, I don't want to hurt you. Well, for sure, if I don't want to hurt you, I sure don't want to grieve you. And let me tell you something. You get through, uh, you go through the Internet, you go through the uh, TV, or you go through whatever. I mean, any kind of stuff on television. I, I got rid of my television. I thought, this is crazy. And I and I, I looked at and I think to myself, how many times have I grieved God? And He's loved me so much, and He's not hurt; He's grieved over this thing. And so I thought, oh my soul, my soul, my soul, have mercy upon me, a sinner. You know what, I'm, and there's a lot of other things I could say. I'm not going to get going. I'm just going to give you one on each one of these verses. So your wicked thoughts and my wicked thoughts, your lustful thoughts or my lustful thoughts, you can go through all kinds of classifications of your thoughts. I mean, they go everywhere. But all I want is to see, he that loveth the most grieves the deepest. My soul. And I, I, so my prayer life became different. <laughs> and, that, and here's the nice thing. I, I led a lady to Christ just the other day. Uh, it was Saturday. I was getting uh, some dry cleaning to come here. And, and, and uh, I, was, I was in the, uh, we have a Korean church. And it was in the Korean church's uh, dry cleaning list, I mean, store. I walked in there, I got my, and I greeted her, and I'd met her before. How you doing? I passed her. I walked right out and got in the car. Started it up, took off. And God Almighty himself and his Holy Spirit said something like this. I can't believe you just did that. Nobody else in the store. This gal, you've wondered about her salvation. You never talked to her. You know, you see, God talks like that. Yeah, he does. <laughs> he says, turn this car around and go back and talk to that gal about getting saved. I said, yes, sir. I got a short turn car, you know, I did it, that thing around, went back. Walked in there. She was sweetly saved. And I'll never forget what she said. She no more said, in Jesus' name, amen, at 
the end of her prayer getting saved, her voice was cracking with emotion. And she said, Pastor, I wish my lost husband could hear something like this. I said, is he still alive? And she said, yeah. I said, when I get back, I want to go see him. But I thought to myself, what a evidence of conversion. The girl had no more said amen, and she was concerned about her lost husband. You know? Now, where did that come from? Is and I don't, I'm not taking any glory for this. I, if I thought I was thinking cleanly that day, you know, and it just seemed like the Holy Spirit just works right in you. And I, it's not us. All glory goes to him. It says, do all to the glory of God. So I admonish us to think about this. Am I grieving God? If you're thinking bad thoughts, they're grieving God. That's what it says. Thoughts of their heart were evil continually. Let's go to Mark 3. We'll look at the sun. Mark 3. In Mark 3, here Jesus is doing something wonderful to a man that has a withered arm here. And it says, uh, a withered hand. And just, just look at in the Pharisees, it was it was on it was on uh, the Sabbath day, and they were being critical of Jesus helping this guy on the Sabbath day. <laughs> and, and look what it says. And he saith unto the man which had withered hand, verse three, it's for second time, stand forth. And he said unto him, Is it lawful to do good? He's doing this for the Pharisees, uh, and on the Sabbath day, or to do evil, save life, or kill? And, and they held their peace. Well, they know if they, how they answered, they'd be wrong. And look what he says. And when he looked around about on them with anger, here's what he says. Being grieved for the hardness of their hearts. He said unto the man, stretch forth thy hand and stretch it out. And his hand was restored whole as the other. Wow, that's the Savior. But what did he say? He said there in verse 5, it being grieved by the hardness of our hearts. Now, let me tell you another thing I said. Our hearts get hard sometimes. Now, we can go through and say, well, I'm, you know, I'm a little out of fellowship and I got a hard, uh, you don't say, I, I got a hard heart. No, you don't say that. You, you make excuses. I make excuses. And here's God Almighty in heaven grieving over your hard heart and my hard heart because I won't do or he, we won't do what he says. How important it is that we realize if we've got a hard heart, it's pretty serious. We're grieving Almighty God. His name is Jesus Christ. And let's go over to Ephesians and close. Ephesians chapter number chapter number four and verse thirty. He's talking about in verse twenty nine. Let no corrupt communication out of your mouth. That's that's pretty important. I think if we're we don't have clean talk. We're probably grieving God. <laughs> then he goes down, he says, And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, uh, whereby ye are sealed on the day of redemption. Let all, here we go, bitterness, watch the, the building on this, bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all, uh, with all malice and be kind one to another. Tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. Can I tell you, I I have a couple that I'm working with. I'm telling you, it's a it's Friday night at the fights, <laughs> and I don't know why they call me in the middle of the night <laughs> on Friday night at the fights, but 
and they argue over the phone. <laughs> and it's yelling and screaming and cussing, and they both profess to be saved. <laughs> Pastor, can you help us? <laughs> yeah, I'd like to help you. I'll shut up the phone. <laughs> I mean, it, the yelling's so loud, it's hurt my ear. But I thought to myself, next time they call me like that, I'm going to say, let me tell you what, I, what we're doing. We're grieving God. Amen. I want you to just, just get a couple words out of this message. We're grieving God. I don't know about you. I don't want to grieve God. So what I'm saying is simply this. Ask yourself the question. Here's the, we grieve against the God, the Holy Spirit, when we're angry and mad and just fighting. And, uh, and that's, honestly, a happy married home in this day and age, they're few and far between, aren't they, preacher? You've you got a pastor's heart. My heart, my, you know, you know I, I, I sound pharisaical when I say this, but I don't mean it. You know how many times my wife and I fought in 42 and a half years before she went to heaven? Four times. One every 11 years. That's true. That's true. And and you can ask that girl back there. She said, they went off, they go off to other people's homes and they say, Dan, we thought everybody was like our home. <laughs> no, no, it's not. It's everybody screaming and yelling at one another. <laughs> not as an exaggeration. We don't mean everyone. But what am I saying is, is this. If you want to be a testimony, don't yell and scream. You're grieving God, and God loves you more than anyone. You know, the prodigal, uh, we were discussing this before. The prodigal grieved his father. I'm out of here. But let me tell you something, though. This is the blessing. I don't want to finish on, on, okay, quit grieving God. I want to tell you what the father did when the prodigal came home. You want, you want to give some joy to God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit? Come home. Just come home. Yeah, you just, hey, hey the doors are open. Just come home. And I mean, they had a celebration of celebrations. Isn't it wonderful to know we got such a loving God that we can grieve him and make him feel so sad at our lifestyles. And then we come home and he rejoices. You know how we are, you know. <laughs> I, I hope I wouldn't be this way, but I, it's, it's a human way. Well, you got to do so much restitution, you wouldn't believe it. <laughs> no, no. He saw him coming, you know. Uh, this, we, we come home today, and you got, you got to go mow the yard 50 times a day and all that kind of stuff, and, you know. No, no, no. What did he do? He killed the fatted calf. God would receive you. If you say, boy, Pastor, I'm, uh, my thought life isn't good. I got good news for you. You may have grieved the Father. And I may have grieved the Father. But if you come home, <laughs> you make him happy, as happy can be. Well, not, and that's what he wants. See, simple as that. Uh, you say, man, I'm, I, I've uh, got a heart that's not right, and I'm, I'm stiff-hearted, and I'm hard-hearted, and, and I fight, and I scream, and all that stuff. He said, I, I still got good news, and I'm finished. Praise be to his holy name. Anyone comes home, Brother Mickey, <laughs> you know it. You've been in it longer than I have, probably. <laughs> and Brother Smith. He's ready to receive us. And maybe this doesn't fit a soul-winning conference, but it does. I'll tell you why. 
Because if you've got a clean heart, you've got some blessings coming that you don't even know about. You know, you've got some blessings coming that, I mean, my soul. Well, after I turned around, went back, led that guy to Christ, and this is just two or three days ago, and, and her saying that, Pastor, I wish, I wish my husband could have heard that. And there I was about ready to leave her and let her go to hell, you know. And it, it makes you more sensitive to the Spirit of God saying, do you see what you just did? Turn the car around and go talk to that girl. I'm so glad I did. So glad I did. So just remember, holy, holy, holy. I've been preaching the, the songs tonight. He's holy. Oh, but is he loving? Is he compassionate? And he wants you to come home. If there's something in there, you say, I've got to get it right. I've grieved God. And, and, I, and I'm going to start using that verse and in, in word in my own cause. It's the word of God. I haven't just heard God. I didn't see that in the Bible. I've grieved God. And God will receive us if we'll just come home. Preacher, come dismiss whatever you want to do. Okay.